Good afternoon everybody, it's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed update on the big snowstorm that is still expected on Wednesday and Thursday, followed by some very cold temperatures that are still anticipated on most of our models across the North, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast. So, to start off the video here, here's a look at the latest 12Z ECMWF model, which stands for a European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, or formerly known as a European model for short. And this is for Monday morning, December the 9th, for your morning commute. And as we do take a look here at the radar forecast, this green area here indicates where you're going to see some light to moderate to perhaps at times heavier rainfall accumulations. And you can see over Tennessee. So if you're in, say, uh, Mississippi, if you're in Alabama, northern Georgia, the Carolinas over here, if you're in Tennessee, um, if you are in, say, Kentucky, West Virginia, as well as Ohio and Indiana, you have the best chances of seeing some heavy rainfall for your morning commute on Monday. So if you're going to work or if you're just simply going holiday shopping for Christmas, please allow some extra time to get to your destination because the rain is going to be coming down pretty hard at times and we could even have embedded thunderstorms within this uh, boundary of moisture that sweeps across the area. And of course, to the north of all of this, on the colder side of the system, you have snowfall that could accumulate across northernmost portion there of Minnesota as well as North Dakota. Now, putting this into motion here for your Monday afternoon, for your evening commute time, you can see that the system really falls apart a little bit other than some heavy rainfall that is kind of down here along a stalled front across southern Alabama into central Georgia and the Carolinas, and also for, say, um, Louisiana, if you're in southern Mississippi, you have the best chances of seeing lingering moderate to heavy rainfall for your evening commute. But as we zoom in here across the northeast, there is also something about the system that will bring some more impacts, and that's the snowfall. So if you're in central Central northeastern New York, if you're in central, say, portion there of New Hampshire, Vermont, if you're in um, Massachusetts, you have the best chances here of seeing at least a little bit of snowfall. Snowfall accumulations with this first batch, anywhere between maybe one to four inches of snow. We're not talking about any crazy accumulation here, but enough to cause some problems for your evening commute. Also, doing any air traveling, just keep that in mind. Maybe some delays and cancellations based on how this looks. But downtown New York and New Jersey, if you're in, say, Connecticut, as well as, say, um, Long, uh, Long Island, including for Rhode Island, there, as well as Nantucket down here, you are likely to only see rainfall with this first batch of moisture that rolls through. And as we zoom back out and we move forward, you can see that snow slowly falls apart with northeastern extent. So not expecting significant impacts with that, but of course, you know, just be careful. If you encounter snow, if you encounter any rainfall or any inclement weather on the roadway, slow down and do not suddenly brake because then your car is gonna slide all over the place, right? Now, another part of this system is going to be what develops in the Midwest. We've been talking about this over the last three to four days about a reamplification, what we call frontal, frontal genetic forcing or frontal genetic uh, genesis that is going to be happening. I know it's a hard word to take in here, but in simple terms, it's a cold front that re-intensifies and we get a surface slow that forms off of that. So what we have here is some more moisture that get uh, that gets going by Tuesday morning. So for your morning commute, just keep that in mind. Um, it's not going to be good out there at all. Just some heavy rainfall at times, some moisture um, that's going to just get reinvigorated. But it's this trough and this colder air that comes in out of the north that gets things stirred up pretty nicely, especially once this gets into the eastern um, seaboard, such as, say, Virginia, if you're in the Carolinas, um, if you're in, say, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, for your morning commute, that's when you're going to start seeing some rain. But it really comes in by overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. It looks like now, it looks like Wednesday morning, even until Thursday, we're looking at the worst conditions 
Mainly, it looks like a Wednesday morning, Wednesday night time frame. Still looking at some big time um, strong winds with this system. Some heavy rainfall you need to be aware of that will really impact your morning commute. And yes, this one could lead to flight cancellations as well. All right, because you can see there's our surface flow. Here is that barrel clinic leaf where we actually have colder air digging, trying to dig this underneath. And this is in the perfect spot for some substantial deepening with the system. So you go from seeing a little bit of a break and then things really amplify by Wednesday morning. And then by Wednesday night, uh, when we look at the northeast here, this is when things get really interesting. So you get this surface low that deepens a little bit here. Actually, it re-deepens. We get a secondary low that forms off of, say, the, in the Chesapeake area and then moves northeastward. There is snow that filters in. Now, models are having a hard time on how much moisture and colder will slide underneath um, this moisture pocket, how much moisture get flung around to generate a lot of snowfall. And that still is to be answered in the numerical model guidance here from the euro the euro still has a decent amount of snowfall across albany syracuse new york as well as portions there of say um, if you are in um, vermont as well as if you are in say upstate new york western new york like say buffalo you got some best chances of snowfall with this lake effect that moves in and notice the cooling temperatures a lot of cold air advection on the in the wake of this system now if we look at previous runs like the zero z european model from yet from last night we can see that it had um, a little lesser snowfall and not as dynamic of a situation now this model run has it stronger actually much stronger than yesterday morning's run actually so this system is still tr technically trending bigger stronger and more serious and in fact so serious that we could see some very intense heavy rainfall and narrow corridors along this front as it moves through which could lead to a lot of flood concerns especially over downtown new york and points eastward into say maine all right and this is again running all the way from say wednesday morning so it starts wednesday morning for those morning commuters that are going to work starts wednesday morning and goes throughout the day wednesday into thursday morning looks like for your morning commute on thursday it looks to be pretty good but with those colder temperatures in the wake any rainfall or any puddles or any wet roadways behind will freeze up and we could have black ice problems in the wake of this system so i just wanted to really make sure you all understand with what we're dealing with but also you need to understand too that there's going to be some strong winds with this system so as we do take a look at our wind future cast here for let's forward this you can see for wednesday morning winds anywhere between 10 and 20 miles an hour but those winds do get stronger especially along the coast of the northeast here like long island if you are on a cape cod nantucket you could have winds anywhere between uh, 25 to 40 miles an hour out of the southerly direction and those wind gusts here could be on the order of say 45 to 55 miles an hour getting close to even uh, 60 miles an hour as this rolls through and even windy behind the system too so yes the system amplifies here with time and that's what you all need to be aware of here with watching this video that the system is going to deepen now how much snowfall are you all expecting let me see if i can find a, a little bit better sector here where we can can actually zoom in a little bit this does uh, an okay job uh, we'll look at the north here in just a, sec a second but you can see lake effect snow possibly two feet of snow in some areas here along the eastern coast of lake michigan if you're in lake superior lake erie lake ontario you could see anywhere between six to twelve inches with some isolated areas here up to two feet okay so a lot of lake effect snow in the wake of this now as far as snowfall goes in general with this system anywhere between um, six to maybe close to 12 inches across say vermont new hampshire and maine no snow is expected at all for the north for downtown new york which is good news because that's very densely populated and then down here around the appalachians near west virginia and central pennsylvania you might get a few inches of snow out of this but really limited here just to the great lakes with that reinforcing cold punch of air that moves on in. Okay, so let's go to, let's go uh, further north here. Let's actually just zoom out and use the United States here for reference. But you can see most of this is going to be impacting Quebec and Ontario, Canada, with possibly more than a few feet of snowfall in some of these areas. And even in northernmost um, portion there of Michigan, 
um, you could see as much as say maybe two plus feet of snowfall in the wake because this colder air is going to come in lake effect snow machine is going to be reamplified. now as far as rainfall totals go again depending on where you're at in the geography will matter on how much rainfall you're going to get some areas that get snow will just get snow and not well we'll start off as rain and then turn over to snow in areas like new york but in general our general thinking here is anywhere between about one to two inches of rainfall but if we get any narrow band of very intense rainfall that shows up here in the extreme southeastern united states like georgia alabama western florida and southern portion there of uh, say mississippi um you could see anywhere between between two to four inches of uh, rainfall and then right along here near say Cape Cod as well as Portland Maine you might see up to three to five inches of rainfall that's enough to cause flooding and some small creeks to reach their flood stage banks so keep that in mind uh, but over here anywhere between about an inch or so of rainfall is anticipated qpf amounts we should say more appropriately than the rainfall themselves because we are going to see some mixed bag of snow in this as well that might exacerbate these numbers just a little bit now the big impact Okay, and everyone needs to really be paying attention to this part of the video. We talked about the snow, we talked about the timing of that storm system, when the rainfall is going to be arriving, but we're also going to be taking a look at those temperatures because the cold air is going to be the big story with this one, all right? We have two things going on, snow, rain, wind, and then colder temperatures on the other half of the system. So as we go forward here, you can see over uh, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, we got temperatures zero degrees or lower. In fact, some areas up here, we have temperatures as cold as negative 20 degrees. That's very cold. That's not, that's something to take pretty seriously. I know you don't see it on the map here. Actually, let me do a quick um, full screen mode here so you can actually see what up with what I'm seeing. So up here, definitely on the colder side. So keep that in mind. Okay, and then let's go back and look at this. And so as we go forward, you can see this colder air moving on in. And my goodness, Thursday morning, I'm telling you, you really need to bundle up. Some of these areas here into northern Minnesota, as well as northeastern North Dakota and northern Wisconsin, could have temperatures as cold as negative 32 degrees. That is dangerous. That is not good. That's to be taken pretty seriously. Your apparent air temperature, look at what it might feel like. Negative 30 to negative 45 degrees in Fahrenheit. That's dangerous. Wind chill advisories, wind chill warnings will certainly need to be issued with this system in the wake of that cold front. And then look at what it might feel like in portions of, across the Great Lakes, such as Indiana, Ohio, the Northeast, might feel like in the single digits, zero degrees, maybe some negative five, negative 10 degree temperatures for Thursday through Friday is what it feels like. The actual air temperature, uh, such as Indiana, might get as cold as maybe five degrees during the overnight hours of Friday morning. And then some of the higher elevations here of the New York, uh, as well as Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine might get as cold as negative two or negative three. But this colder air is gonna be felt and you'll notice it. So here's a look at your temperature anomaly forecast really quickly. You can see temperatures, especially Thursday morning, will be well below average. In fact, some areas here in, say, Minnesota and North Dakota, as well as Wisconsin, could have temperatures 30 to 45 degrees below average. That is significant. That is record low temperatures, perhaps the lowest or the coldest temperatures in the month of December in a very long time. So keep that um, in the back of your head that the, even so, yes, it gets that cold in the winter time. That doesn't happen until, say, January or early February. Instead, it's not even Christmas, and we're seeing January and even early February like temperatures in Minnesota and Wisconsin. So make sure you really bundle up for the cold weather. And of course, down here in Florida and the north, uh, southeast, temperatures will be anywhere between 10 to 15 to even 20 degrees below average, uh, below your seasonal normals. And then once we go into early next week, fingers crossed that the pattern changes, you do get warmer weather. So people that don't like the cold will have a chance to thaw out and see some near to above average temperatures. Now, really quickly, I want to touch upon is the jet stream. This is pretty impressive. 
for early to mid-December standards. As we take a look here at the 500 millibar jet stream, this is at about 18,000 feet above the surface. Take note, again, here's our first initial system. So you can see this little pocket here, this area of vorticity and spin, jet max rolling through the area. That's bringing that storm system, some heavy rainfall, some snow that we talked about, right? And then it's going to get revigorated by another system, uh, the, the one that we talked about. This is the big guy. This is going to be the much colder air coming in and the heavy snow, strong winds, and heavy rainfall for the northeast. And take note, look at this jet stream. Very intense. Speed max in the right front quadrant. A lot of divergence here with winds aloft anywhere between 100 to 115 knots. That's very strong. So a, lot, a pr good pressure response. And then you can see right here over the northeast at 18,000 feet, that's 140 knot speed max um, rotating on the right front quadrant of this trough with the left exit region for a lot of cyclogenesis to actually happen. So some substantial deepening and pressure falls here with strong winds are anticipated within the system as it amplifies. And then that cooler air just stays around in the wake of that. So I just wanted to show you all the jet stream forecast. Now, if you found this video really helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the like button, and share this video with their family and friends on social media. You guys are really awesome. Thank you for sharing my last video in yesterday's video. I do appreciate it. We got almost 20,000 views on that video. So make sure you do share this because this is a big deal. This really concerns me because of the cold air that's coming in out of the north and how much snow and rainfall you could actually see with this system. All right, I want you all to be safe. Please take it easy on Wednesday and Thursday especially because of that big storm system. All right, but otherwise, make Saturday a great day here in the home weather office on the 7th day of December here, 2024. I will talk to you guys again on Monday.